time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. And don't forget to click subscribe. Visit Clive5Art.co.uk So as you can see, I've done a preliminary sketch. Um, and I've decided to do some flamingos, yes. So these are quite easy. Um, we need to play around with the dimensions a little bit. But um, yeah, they're just quite simple shapes. That's why I've decided to use this today. And I thought it's gonna be a nice bright painting as well. So so I don't know if you can actually see. I've just done some basic shapes um, like that. This is a very, very quick sketch. We can play around with the, the dimensions when we're actually getting on the canvas. And the good thing is doing it this way it gives you a little bit of an idea of the composition as well. But I mean, yeah, I thought flamingos, what a fantastic idea. Okay, so let's work on the ground of the canvas. Now I'm thinking possibly a green ground. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna need to mix some of that up. So I got a little, one of these little pots as you can see here, and um, I'm gonna use that to mix my, my ground. So the first thing we need to do is get some gesso. We'll give the gesso a good shake like that because of the settlement. Because as you know, gesso settles. And we need to decant seven and a half a pot. Now what we need to do is we need to get some green. And I thought, um, let's go for, um, let's get a, a bit of phyllo green. Because that's quite a nice, nice color green. And we've already got some there anyway. So let's just mix a little bit of that with the titanium, um, the gesso. Sorry, it's not titanium white, it's gesso. And um, what I've also got um, in here, uh, which is handy for you if you want to go and get some, is I got some of these little stirring sticks. These are coffee sticks that you'll see um, in the coffee store, which is really good because I can use them to mix my paint like this. And I'm saving my brush by doing exactly that. Now you can see that's gotten like a lovely, lovely emerald type of green color. And if you're as, if you're as tight as me, or I should say a skin flint, you can wipe this onto some kitchen roll. Let it dry and use it again. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Now, what we need to do now is apply that to our actual canvas. All I'm gonna do really now is just put that gesso and phyllo green mix equally over the canvas like that and it's quite warm in the studio again today and because uh, as I said in, in the past I've got a dark roof so it's a black roof in fact it's, um, it's, and it does attract the heat a lot and um, with the camera lights and that in in the studio it does get a bit hot in here but we will persevere and don't forget to do the edges and I don't do the edges um, which I should, but I, I just for the speed of, of filming, I don't do that. And um, if I do decide to keep a painting, then obviously I'll go and sort that out at a later point. So just getting this in a nice smooth coating as you can. Don't worry too much about it. All we look in here is to actually just put some colour on the canvas and get rid of that bright white and I thought it was a real fun thing to do today is actually paint with a green background because we normally paint with a white background and then block it in all different colors and I thought it would be nice if we done something slightly different today and I'm just smoothing that through don't worry if there's a couple of little lighter spots and a couple of darker spots then that's all going to add to the illusion because I think we're going to be putting some water in here today and you can keep this, you can put a little bit of wax paper over it. Um, you can keep it in your wet palette or you can just chuck it in the bin. And um, I might just keep hold of that just for one second. I'm gonna put that on my wet palette. I'm gonna allow this to dry, make myself a cup of tea and I should be back like this. There we are, I'm back. <laughs> as quick as that, I've lost my hat and I've got a cup of tea. <laughs> so yes, I'm gonna have a nice, a nice sip of tea and I'm gonna look at this and now that's all nice and dry. And now what I've got, to, what we've got to do is I'm actually looking at my drawing and um, what I didn't actually put on there was some sort of an horizon line. Now, why do we need to put an horizon line on this? Well, we need something, because there's gonna be water and some sort of background, but we're gonna need that to meet somewhere. So I'm thinking 
approximately there so that's going to be six say seven inches seven inches down from the top we we need to put a, a little line like that seven inches down from the top on that side and a little line like that and I'm just gonna draw a line straight across very lightly just so I got a bit of a guide now so our um, our flamingos are going to be sitting in this this is going to be the water area and this is going to be some sort of a background now what we're going to do is decide how we're going to do the background because what I want to do is paint the background first and then put the flamingos in afterwards now, this is a different way of actually painting but it works really well so um, let's get on to that okay so I'm, I'm, I'm at I'm actually at my um, palette and we need to get some water in there I've got a little bit of this flow improver as you know this is all available on my website if you want to pop along and purchase that and my puppy is back in again and she does that regularly now I haven't decided exactly what brushes I'm going to be using in this as you know I don't actually do that but I'm going to pick up just an ordinary um, short flat like that there um, and this is one you've seen no end of times on, on uh, my lessons and I use my brushes to death I'm just moistening down the palette now I'm gonna get a little bit of that hooker's green and a little bit of the phyllo green mixed together so that's phyllo green and hooker's green I'm just gonna mix a little bit of that together I'm just taking it off the excess onto my uh, wiping mat grabbing some kitchen roll get some kitchen roll it's handy yes it is now I'm looking at my my drawing and I'm thinking let's put yeah that's a nice color let's just just put very lightly what I've done I, if you if you can see the, the edge is a little bit splayed and that's why I like this brush so very lightly just very lightly pull down just a couple of marks like this there we go now of course if you wanted to you could put a bit of masking tape across there and um, let me show you why I'll just do that anyway Because we can keep that edge nice and sharp then there we go of the flamingos I'm just going to go straight into some hookers green now and I'm going to just gonna yeah that's a little bit darker so we want to put in between that now we want to put a little bit of darkness here and there I'm just dragging down very lightly just letting the brush do what he wants to do I'm thinking, consciously thinking of going out and shouting at my puppy. <laughs> no, I'm consciously thinking of what I'm doing here now. There we go. Now I'm going to put that brush into some water, and I'm going to introduce. Let me have a look. Let, we've got a we've got a, a script liner brushes. You you've seen these before. These are the long, long pointy script liner brushes. I'm going to bring a bit of that lemon yellow into that phyllo and hooker's green mix. I'm just going to mix that together until I find the, the depth of colour I'm looking for. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of lightness, a little bit too light. So let's bring a little bit of hooker's green back to that. And I'm going to touch it with a bit of Mars black. I just want to darken that down. And I'm not too worried about using Mars black um, with the green because there's, um, there's blue in it. That's better. I just want a couple of very light reeds and bushes and and things like this now I know out in the Serengeti or wherever they are these flamingos are not sure exactly but I know they're out in Africa somewhere there's no there's not actual reeds in that like this but um, this is just the the scene that I was inspired to paint from the trip I had down into West Wales in um, a nice little place too actually So I'm just putting a couple of these here and there and there and here. I'm washing that brush out. I'm going to bring a bit of the lemon yellow across. I'm going to mix a bit of titanium white with it. Just because I wanted to make it a little bit more opaque. And just a touch, just a touch of green to that. Just to give it a nice little tint. Picking up some moisture. And just put a couple of little lines here and there like that 
lines here and there like that just to just to break up the background just a touch okay so I'm gonna put that back in the water I'm gonna get my other brush with the square flat and again I'm going back into this hooker's green a bit of phyllo green and now I'm gonna remove the masking tape and I'm just gonna go down very lightly very lightly hardly touch it just let the brush drag just let the brush drag like that just go across very quickly hardly touch hardly touching it hardly 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 touching hardly touching now and I'm gonna pick up a bit of that other green we've mixed and I'm just gonna put them lines in like that and again very quickly before it dries just go across a little bit like that let me get a little edge a little bit darker there and we can uh, sort that out in one second oops don't worry too much about that we'll sort that out now I'll just bring a couple of this lines in like that it's getting a bit of dark green let's just darken that edge off there pull up blend it in pull down blend that in don't worry too much about that lines as well and let's get back into this mix and now instead of going like that what we want to do is do this watch now just make a little like this is little big snakes see snakes this snakes and don't worry if you miss little bits in here because it's not going to pick up every single thing we go back into our yellow and we do exactly the same thing with our yellow just little little snakes little snakes running across your canvas there we go little snakes little snakes like that and then we get a nice nice shot any brush doesn't matter any brush will do any brush this is just a nice this is just an angle flat I, I'm just gonna go very quickly across like that okay that was just to blend it in so I'm just gonna wash that out now I'm gonna pick up my palette knife I'm gonna pick up a bit of this yellow lemon yellow just a bit of white you can do this with a brush don't worry don't worry about anything else so I'm just using a palette knife because it's a little bit easier for me and I'm just gonna go straight across like that. doesn't really matter how you do it you can do it this way if you want to I'll try and show you a couple of different ways oops big lump don't worry too much that we'll sort that out now so if that has happened like it's just happened to me get that little blending brush and then just brush it through like that There we are, no problem. Because I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna play around with that just in one second. I wanna think about I wanna darken our background up a touch. Uh, but I wanna I wanna put some bit of a bluish type of uh, effect on here. Now the only way we can do that is if we actually make a, a wash. So um let's see if we can do that. So I'm gonna get some moisture on my brush. I'm gonna bring a bit of that Ceylon blue in. But I'm gonna bring a little bit of that feel or green to it because I want like a nice teal type of color so I want a green blue rather than a blue blue 
and I know the undertone of um, Ceylon Blue tends to be on a bit more on the green side so let's just see what happens if we put a bit of that over a section of this water now we just just glaze in with water now just over the top and that's just going to darken up that area there and again we've come in this way now but leave don't go all over leave a little bit of what we've already painted there in place you don't want it too too dark but you want to make it look as if because this has gone a bit bluer now it's cooled it down but that's that's still bright so we've got a little bit of like a reflection there already now let's add a little bit more sail on blue but this time we're going to use a little bit of hooker's green to that so we're going to darken it more now i'm not using a black now if i use the black to that then it would go too dark but i want to, i want a dark green but i'm using the greens with the blue rather than the black to, to shade it down i want to shade definitely but i don't want i don't want a strong shade so i'm just very lightly just darkening down and then just as a glaze this is a wash if you, if you would you can use glazing medium for this or you can use matte medium it makes no difference all I'm doing is just putting a wash in and just adding a little bit of extra color a little bit of extra dimension to it bringing a bit more sail on blue bit of phyllo green hookers green there we are notice I always take some paint off my brush if only a little bit darker a little bit more because green to it and just darken down but pull up as well let's bring a little bit of yellow to that corner now so I'm lightening down that mix again but I'm not using uh, white I'm using yellow I just want to bring a little bit of light in here and there like that Um, we, we have lost a couple of um, details now with our yellow so let's re-emphasize those and if it's not working just put a little bit more white to the yellow just a little bit of color leave the edges just put a little bit in the center like that and you can play around with this type of background as much as you want um, I think it's a wonderful way to actually do this and um, bring a bit more of that sail on blue over now a bit more hookers green and again what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to just darken up a bit more green I'm just scagging across trying not to kill what I've already done just adding a little bit of color just going in on the edge there give it a bit of a rounded look and I can pick that back up in just a minute So we've already got that look of reflections and things in the water now and um, I'm quite happy with the way that's looking now you can put some lilies on there if you wanted to put your, your flamingos into a lily pond um, 
I did actually think, if I remember, there were lilies in there, and that's why I mentioned it. Let me just grab my brush, and just, I just moistened my brush. I just want to lighten that area there. I'm just going to bring a bit of yellow in, just on a small brush, just to bring in a little bit of reflection. So I'm just very lightly scrubbing a little bit of yellow in just to lighten a couple of areas off. Now you can say this is a um, beginner's painting or you can you can say it's, uh, it's just as you move in from beginners into intermediate. Um, it, it, I would recommend anybody give anything a try. Doesn't matter how advanced you think it is, um, because you never know. Oof, it's warm. You never know how you can progress with something if you don't try. Now, I'm trying to give us a little bit of depth. Now, I'm quite happy to let that sit there now for a, 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 another little bit, and um, I'm going to see if I can scale down my flamingos from my drawing. Um, this is the type of thing I was thinking of doing, as you can see. Um, I don't know if you can see that so well there. There you go. Um, so I need to scale them down into that drawing. So I'm going to put the first one in place. Once I've got the first one in place and it's looking good, and then we will proceed to the next. So if you just give me a couple of minutes, I'll be back. <laughs> you sound like Arnold Schwarzenegger all the time, don't I? I'll be back. So I thought I would video this anyway. So I'm looking at roughly the, the background and, and trying to work out some sort of dimension on this on this flamingo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw, this is a watercolour pencil. And the reason I use a watercolour pencil is because if I get a little bit of water on my brush, you watch now, I can remove the lines without using a razor and without damaging my, my, paint, my painting. So that's why I use a watercolour pencil if I can. Okay, so I'm looking at some sort of a, I wouldn't say that's like an oval, oval type of shape, like that. But it's like an eye on the side, isn't it? And, and then they got little tails that come down like that, so that's like a little triangle. Um, but this comes up like that. And let's get the leg in. So I'm looking at my drawing. So that leg comes down like that. It's got a little bit of a, a knuckle on it and that goes into water and the legs go back like that. It's got a little knuckle there. Now the long neck, now it's quite long actually the neck on these things. So let's put a circle there and then just take that nice straight line like that and is that in proportion I wonder so I'm looking at my drawing maybe that next a little bit long <laughs> yes it's a bit long Clive so let's moisten my brush Get rid of that line. A little bit of kitchen roll. Bump, it's gone. Okay, now. Maybe there, and we'll put a circle there. That looks a bit better. Yes, I think we I think we had a long neck. And then the beaks, looking at the beaks, they tend to come out like that. They're like little buckets because they turn their heads upside down and they put their the beaks under the water and they sieve like that save all the stuff all the prawns i think it's prawns anyway that's why they're pink i think sure it's prawns something like that anyway so we've got our first one established um we want to put another one there looking in the same way and you can you can have all you can see there with him is his one leg because he's got the other one tucked up like that 
and again the head's going to be roughly on the same level okay so we got one there we got one there we're going to need a couple around by you now so I'm going to continue doing that and um, once I've established those um, I will resume filming okay so I've established um, some of the uh, flamingos now what we've got to do is block these out now I'm gonna block these out um, with um, a light pink I think yes so I'm gonna paint these out with a light pink so without further ado let's get on to that okay um, flamingos they, they can be like a salmon -y pink so I thought let's let's just mix up bring a bit of white and a little touch of a rosary and crimson into that that's about right we just want a nice pink I'm not overly worried about depth of color or correct tones and all that at the moment because all I want to do is just get these in place so all I'm going to do now is just go around my line work and just establishing the shape of the flamingos themselves using a little bit of moisture with a medium mix formula and we're just going to build these up and just block these out the flamingos are lovely birds they really are and if, if you've never had the opportunity to see them um, that's quite a shame really and, and we are lucky that we're able to go to zoos and things like that but I, I, I do like flamingos I think they're wonderful birds funny funny birds there so let's just get his head in place and that's all you need to do is just get his the idea of where he's going to be and block out your color there we are so that's all we need to do is that now I'm gonna speed this process up a little bit because I don't want to take video time up I'm um, too much with doing blocking in so I'll just speed the video up Welcome, thanks for stopping by. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. And don't forget to click subscribe. Visit Clive5R.co.uk. Now we need to think, let's put a little bit of, let's get a bit of titanium white on the edge of our um, detailing brush and I just want to go a bit by there. there a bit by there so a little bit of white here and there there you go haha -ha. starting to look like a flamingi now Mars black Don't rush, don't rush this. You've got more time than I have. And please don't rush this. Concentrate on your detailing work. 
because this is what's going to sell this painting because it's got some lovely colours in it and they're all compliments and that's the key thing as well sometimes when you when you're painting now let's just put a little bit of that and wash your brush get the tiniest amount of black right on the very tip right on your very tip of your brush and look at the beak and roughly roughly about there little dot and a line little dot and a line and again there little dot and a line and there little dot and a line little dot and a line little dot and a line a little dot on a line doesn't have to be dead accurate now what we're going to do is go into our eraser and crimson now bring in some eraser and crimson into that pink color that we made earlier so we lighten it a little, a little bit so down that edge there Just down the one edge, just over the top of his head like that, and then just under his belly there like that. See? Wipe your brush clean. Wipe your brush clean, and then just blend that through like that, nice and light there. So just blend that through. Now again, same colour. And let's go down. Whoops, I want to go into the darker colour. Across the top of the head. Nice steady hand for this. Down the back of his neck. Over the top. There we are. And out. Don't worry if you've gone over his eye. What I just done. That's not a problem. I'm just going to darken on the edge of that now I'm just put a little bit more razor and crimson with it I thought I was going to use some orange but we will not use the orange in this case I'm just going to a bit more razor and crimson there we are let's re-establish that eye in just a second let's get some darker colour there and if you use your brush very light pressure and make sure it's got a little bit of moisture to it what's going to happen as you pull you're going to leave little lines like that what that's going to do that's going to help you develop some like patterns shadow patterns And looks like feathers. This is your main bird, so you need to make sure he's all nice. Now, wash your brush very quickly, go into that lighter color, picking up some of your brush, and then just going over that again. And in between, picking up a bit more paint, going in between these dark spots, a little bit more paint. Don't overbrush very lightly. And you're going to get these lovely looking effects of the flamingo feathers with working very, very easily. Working very easily. Just developing these colours, making them blend. And I've had it said, you make it look so easy, Clive. The only reason it's made to look easy, don't forget that little extra bit by there. Don't the only reason it's made to look easy is because 
artist as as as, as, as the better you get the more advanced you get the more you understand how your paints are going to work and you get to know the speed that you can actually paint and knowing that speed is a major in major part of being able to paint well and um, and he's talking I made that leg a little bit thick but don't worry let's just put a little bit of lighter down there we will we'll hide that and we'll don't worry too much about it but you get to know your, your paints your brushes you get to know how things work and the, the the speed as well is a very important thing you know in the in in the back of your mind how long it's going to take each brush stroke and how long it's going to take the the paint to actually dry on you so that's why that's all I can say it, 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 when I when I say it's about practice it really is about practice it's more about practice of playing with your paints and getting to know how your paints are going to work for yourself and speed you need to work sometimes quite fast because as you know acrylics dry within about 10 to 15 minutes and they can be quite tiresome in some cases that they, they, don't, they don't always work for you no they don't always work for me they don't always work for the other artists that work with them but what we what we can do is we know how these paints work and by knowing how these paints work then we can work in different atmospheres like you know the, the, today it's really hot and humid in my studio so I know my paints are going to be working and drying a lot quicker so what I've actually did I've, I've thinned them down a little bit more than I would normally do for the simple reason is that I know they're going to dry quicker so if there's less water in the paint then they're going to dry a lot quicker and then a little bit more white to this side I'm going to make this one a little bit lighter because he's in the background and I don't want him to be so dominant so I'm just bringing in a little bit of a bit of a lighter colour to him there you go and what I'll do now is I'll make this edge a little bit darker picking up a little bit more rizzer and crimson and I'm just going to run that edge a little bit darker there if I can get this to run neat and then picking up a little bit of that lighter mix and I'm going to blend that through as well and don't forget this is on an old canvas this is a, this is a canvas that I've done a lesson on not so long back about fur and eyes and that for the cut so I'm just using an old canvas and I'm painting over the canvas like many artists have done all over hundreds of years ago now making that one darker that's made it look in front of that one and that's this is what we're trying to accomplish here and again I want to make this one a little bit lighter as well now depending on how much food these birds eat and I think it's shrimp I'm not too sure um, some sort of crustacean anyway uh, I'm not sure if there is shrimp but I know what they do eat is, 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 is red or pink now depending on how much they eat it depends on their color so if they've had a lot of a lot of let's just say shrimp to eat that particular day they're going to be a lot redder because they adopt the the color the, the, the color that comes out of the the shellfish or whatever it is um, basically colors their feathers so obviously if one's had a little bit more food one day than the other one he's going to be a bit redder and that's all it is it's picking up a bit of darker color just under his breast there on the bottom of his tail like that I'm doing his leg as well because his leg is going to be a little bit pinker and just continue to just put some thicker lines and 
thinner lines and just get a little bit of detail in the water now this is these are going to die back and if you put them on a little bit too thick as i said before get a little brush and just blend them through like that get them looking a little bit smudgy and that's all we need to do that's all we need to do now we're nearly there yes and what a wonderful picture this is this has made me feel really happy today because i like the wonderful colors and um, it's, it's looking really nice now what we haven't done let me just put our brush in the water let's get a little bit of this flamingo color and then just put a little bit of reflection of these flamingos in the water just to otherwise it won't look right so just a little bit of pink in the water there we are and that balances it off lovely so we need to get a nice brush any brush will do I like using um, a nice strip liner brush if I can I'm going to pull that to a point and then in this bottom corner I'm just going to lightly sign my name and you can sign it any way you want obviously using your name or a monogram or anything like that in any corner you want and I've been asked Clive is there any specific way to sign your paintings? Well, no, there's not. But I would, I, what I would suggest is don't put a date on them because you don't want to date them. If I put 2015 on this and I wanted to sell it and it was 2018, people go, I don't want to buy that. It's old. It hasn't sold. So that's, it's a good idea not to date them, to be honest with you. And, and that's what I stick to. Um, now, you can go and you can put a little bit of white detail you can just pick a little bit of white paint and you can just put a little bit of more detail into these these birds as you feel fit so as I said you've got a little bit more time than I have and then you can just play around with the detail in but I just wanted to show you a very quick way of doing a background and putting um, a subject in this case flamingos into that so all it remains me to say is thank you very much for joining me today and uh, taking up my invitation to come into the studio and um, I hope that you've learned something today and you can have a go at this and you can take this away because I know you can do this. I know you just need to give it a try. Yeah.